The Chinese army has undergone a sweeping wave of modernization over the past two decades. Artillery, the god of war and the king of battle, holds a particular significance in Chinese doctrine, so it's been on the receiving end of significant investment. But how do the endless streams of different variants we see at parades translate into practice? Like the US, China supports its maneuver companies and battalions with mortars. Small 60mm mortars are in infantry companies, while 82 or 120mm mortars support battalions. Some units use man-carried or towed mortars, but the PLA has also invested in self-propelled gun mortars for battalions. Gun mortars are a compromise between a direct fire gun and an indirect mortar, and China mounts them directly on vehicles that they can fire under armor. At the brigade level, units are supported by a variety of 122mm howitzers. The legacy solution is a towed howitzer based on the Soviet D-30. However, those are on their way out, with new self-propelled versions coming online mounted on everything from light utility vehicles and medium trucks to amphibious armored vehicles for different types of brigades. Brigades also have a battery of 122mm multiple launch rockets similar to the Soviet BM-21 Grad. While the howitzers are mainly used for close support, limited by their modest firing range, rocket artillery is used for deeper strikes, annihilation missions, and counter-battery. Limited range makes brigade artillery vulnerable to counter-battery, as American or Russian brigade artillery will outrange them. This is why the PLA focuses so much on mobility, demonstrated by its wide adoption of self-propelled artillery, even in light units that traditionally use towed pieces. The focus is on shooting and scooting to survive counter-fire. Five or six maneuver brigades constitute a group army, which are roughly equivalent to a U.S. Corps. Each group army has one artillery brigade with heavier howitzers and rockets. There are 13 group armies and two military districts with artillery brigades. In terms of howitzers, the legacy platforms are towed 152mm howitzers based on the Soviet D-20 and 130mm guns based on the Soviet Mark 46, the latter of which is a lower priority piece mainly used by reserves, border troops, and coastal defense units. However, both are being phased out in favor of 155mm self-propelled howitzers in line with Western practice. Artillery brigades also have larger rocket artillery, with the most common being unguided 300mm MLRS like the Soviet Smirch. But the Chinese have also adopted a modular pod-based rocket artillery similar to a larger HIMARS, capable of taking different sizes of GPS-guided missiles. Diving a little deeper into this, we'll start at battalion mortars. But first, if you want an easier way to get informed on events going on in China or anywhere else, I recommend our sponsor, Ground News. You ever look at your news feed and just think this is all garbage? Clickbait and misinformation flying every which way, and news agencies you like can still have gaps in their coverage. Ground News has some legitimately cool features to help you sift through the noise. The site shows you how much of the left, right, and center is covering a story, and you can directly compare headlines to see how different agencies frame things. If a story isn't being covered by a specific side, there might be a reason for that, and you might be missing out on news if you're just looking at your algorithmically generated feed. I especially appreciate that they show you who owns the news sites. You can be reading what seems like an independent paper, and it's owned by a mega conglomerate. So Ground News helps you keep track of where your news is coming from. So if you want an easier and better way to stay informed, go to ground.news slash battle order, or click on the link in the description, and it'll be helping us out as well. But back to Chinese artillery. The PLA Ground Force's maneuver brigades can be broken down into a few major niches. The most lethal is the Heavy Combined Arms Brigade, based on main battle tanks and tracked infantry fighting vehicles, as well as light tanks in the Tibetan Plateau and the border with Southeast Asia. Then you have Medium Brigades, which are ideally based on wheeled IFVs and assault guns, but are sometimes equipped with older main battle tanks and APCs. Amphibious brigades are organized somewhat similarly to medium brigades, but they're based mainly on tracked amphibious armored vehicles and focused entirely on Taiwan. And then there are several types of light brigade, including the outdated motorized brigade being phased out, and air assault, mountain, and high mobility brigades. Each maneuver battalion within those brigades has a firepower company that serves manpads short-range air defense, crew served weapons, and six to nine mortars, although most footage I've seen has six. 
Six mortars is still more than the four normally found in U.S. Army Battalion HQs, with the exception of striker units, which also have company level 120s. Lower priority light units or ones that require man packing may be fielding the old PP87 82mm mortar with a maximum range of 6 kilometers. The PBP 172 120mm mortar can reportedly be carried by five men through the use of aluminum construction and breaking the barrel into two parts. There's talk that they're centralized on the southern border with the Vietnam, Laos, and Myanmar, where the harsh terrain favors man packed or towed artillery. They've been seen towed by small utility vehicles, most likely part of an air assault unit, and some light brigades appear to have a version of the warrior as well for carrying this mortar. In the past, this was actually the role of 100mm mortars, which was used as a regimental level piece for air assault units and units that were fighting in the jungle or highland regions. Air Force Airborne Brigades and Army Mountain Brigades have been using the PCP-1 self-propelled automatic 82mm mortar, which is essentially a Chinese version of the Soviet 2B9 Vasilik mounted on their Humvee equivalent. Meanwhile, medium brigades and some light brigades use the mid-2000s PLL-5 120mm self-propelled gun mortar, derived from the Soviet Nona-S imported from Ukraine. Heavy brigades use the equivalent PLZ-10 mounted on a tracked APC chassis. The normal range of the Nona type systems is around 8.8 km with standard shells, or 12.8 km with rocket assisted shells. So while lacking the flexibility of a dismounted mortar in complex terrain, they outrange the American 120mm rounds currently in service and have a self-defense capability against light armor via direct fire. The next level up from the battalion is the Combined Arms Brigade. Although brigades vary in platforms, the structure is more or less consistent. They'll have an HQ, four maneuver battalions, and reconnaissance, artillery, air defense, operational support, and service support battalions. The artillery battalion will generally have three howitzer batteries, one rocket artillery battery, and an anti-tank guided missile battery. Howitzer and rocket artillery batteries of the brigade level have 9 pieces each, so 27 howitzers and 9 MLRS per brigade. This is a higher concentration of artillery than a US Army brigade, which either have 12 towed 105s or 6 155s in the light infantry brigades, or 18 155s in striker and armored brigades. But keep in mind that American 155s outrange Chinese 122s and have higher lethality downrange due to more explosive filler. A quick side note on HE content and different kinds of shells, the explosive filler weight of the standard HE round on a Nona S 120mm mortar is about 4.9 kilos or 10.8 pounds. Rocket assisted projectiles are more like 3.3 kilos. Chinese 122mm HE rounds for Brigade SPGs are in that 3.5 kg filler area. Compare this to American M1 105mm shells at 1.9 to 2.3 kg, and M795 155mm projectiles at 10.8 kg. This is because small changes in diameter create bigger changes in volume, and mortar shells generally have more explosive filler than howitzer shells of the same caliber. The Chinese 122 also has slightly superior range to the American 105, reaching out to 18 km with standard HE, or 27 km with rocket-assisted projectiles or RAP. This compares to 105mm light guns, which can reach out to 17.5 km normally, or 19.5 km with rocket assistance. But an American M109 Paladin with its 155mm howitzer can hit out to 21 km normally, 30 km with rocket assistance, and 40 km with guided Excalibur shells. Particularly in the case of the PLA High Mobility Brigade versus an American IBCT in a vacuum, and I stress in a vacuum, the American is outgunned in both number of artillery pieces, range, and lethality. Not counting reinforcing artillery or the US's far more mature and numerous close air support capabilities. But at the same time, when compared to a Russian brigade which has 36 152mm SPGs and 18 rocket launchers, it's not going to Soviet levels of artillery concentration. In terms of brigade howitzers, there are seven different platforms in service. 
first, there's the Toad PL-96, a Soviet D-30 clone, which is acknowledged by the PLA to require too many crew to operate and require too much time to pack up and move to avoid counter-battery. So it's being replaced by two platforms. In the Western, Northern, and Central Theater Commands, its interior regions bordering Russia, India, and North Korea, Toad howitzers are being replaced by the PCL-161, based on a 3.5-ton medium truck. Meanwhile, in the Southern and Eastern Theater Commands, more oriented towards Taiwan and Southeast Asia, it's being replaced by the PCL-171, which is based on the Warrior CTL-181A series of MRAP utility vehicles. The reason for the geographic split between the truck-mounted SPGs appears to be due to mobility, although this is perhaps open-source speculation. The PCL-161, being based on a truck, has a larger carrying capacity and thus can carry more ammo. So the 161 is probably the superior artillery platform, while the 171 offers increased strategic mobility for theaters that rely on airlift or sea lift to reach the combat zone, or are inundated with jungle terrain. Movement in the interior would mainly be accomplished by rail and self-deployment on road, so perhaps having a slightly larger SPG isn't as big of a concern there. The somewhat older PCL-9 is also in play in light units, but it's likely to be phased out with the two newer systems as the PLA standardizes its chassis. Medium brigades have their equivalent in the PLL-9 mounted on the same chassis as their wheeled IFV, while heavy brigades have a mix of the older PLZ-89 and the newer PLZ-7. Rocket artillery batteries similarly have distinct variants for each type of formation. Light brigades are also getting two new platforms, a 120mm MLRS based on the Warrior for Southern and Eastern Theater units, and one based on a 3.5-ton truck in the interior. They're similar in role to a BM-21 Grodd, with a reported maximum range of 40 to 50 kilometers. However, unlike a Grodd, the newer Chinese MLRs are based on 20 rocket detachable pods. Although we've seen footage of PLA troops reloading these pods manually in the way of a Grodd, which is extremely manpower and time intensive, Chinese MLRs have accompanying reloading vehicles that can reload whole pods with a crane. It's not as elegant of a solution as the HIMARS self-reloading crane, but a big improvement over older Chinese systems, such as the PHL-81, PHZ-89, and PHL-90. By contrast, you're still seeing Russians manually reload their newer Tornado Gs, which in practice increases the turnaround times between fire missions, or limits the size of a salvo you can fire at a time. Medium and heavy brigades are similarly getting new pod-based MLRs, but with two pods for a total of 40 rockets. In mediums, the PHL-11 is replacing older truck-based systems, while the PHZ-10 is replacing the PHZ-89 in heavy brigades. In practice, these MLRs would likely act in general support of the entire brigade, hitting targets in depth and performing counter-battery missions. We've also seen Chinese engineers using MLRs to distribute mines with special rockets. However, due to the imprecision of unguided rockets and the time necessary to load any sort of specialty munition, they're not ideal for close support of troops in contact. This remains the domain of howitzers and mortars. Moving on, the highest level artillery we're looking at are in the Group Army's Artillery Brigade. These formations vary more based on geography and needs, but they contain heavier artillery than is found in combined arms brigades. With this artillery, they can mass fire at the army level or provide reinforcing fires in support of individual maneuver brigades. Starting off with cannons, the legacy solutions are the old Soviet-derived 152mm howitzers and 130mm guns. There are also older PLZ-83 152mm SPGs similar to a Soviet Akatsiya, but all three are being rapidly replaced, particularly in the East, with 155mm self-propelled solutions. Firstly, there's the tracked PLZ-5. Its 52 caliber 155mm gun is capable of reaching out to 30 kilometers with standard ammunition and 39 kilometers with rocket-assisted shells. A variety of shells are available, including equivalents to the laser-guided Krasnopol, GPS-guided Excalibur, and bonus anti-tank top-attack shells. 
The newest laser-guided projectiles marketed by Norinco are reported to have a range of 25 kilometers, while the GPS-guided shells can reach out to 35 kilometers. It's unknown to me as to their proliferation in actual PLA units versus Norinco just trying to hit up the export market, but we have seen them being used in exercises. Also coming into service is the PCL-181, which has a similar cannon but mounted on a 6x6 truck. Whereas the PLZ-5 will probably be a support option for heavier units, the PCL-181 will probably shine in supporting medium and light brigades. Being a wheeled truck means it can self-deploy on eastern China's dense highway infrastructure, whereas tracked units generally require tank transporters. It can also fit on Y9 medium transport aircraft for rapid deployability overseas or at home. Notably, Navy Marine Corps units also operate the PCL-181 at the brigade level, and divisions under the Xinjiang Military District have them in their fire regiments. Group Army Artillery Brigades also have a significant focus on rocket and missile artillery. The PHL-3 is emblematic of this, which is a truck-based 12-tube 300mm MLRS similar to a Russian BM-30 Smirch. They fire unguided rockets or guided missiles, with a maximum range of 130 kilometers. Static targets at the operational level, relevant for a division size unit such as infrastructure, command and control nodes, troop assembly areas, and artillery would be the most likely targets for this platform. However, a newer platform is also entering service, tentatively called the PHL-16 or PCL-191. I'd argue it may represent the single largest increase in capability of any of their new offerings. Unlike other MLRs in service, the PHL-16 is based on two modular pods that can hold three sizes of missiles. These include the pre-existing 300mm rockets, guided 370mm missiles with a range of 220 kilometers, and a 750mm Attackums equivalent with a range of at least 280 kilometers. Its circular error probability, where 50% of rounds are expected to hit, is reported to be 30 meters, a fair bit larger than HIMARS's 8 meter error, but this could also be referring to downgraded export versions. In terms of structure, artillery brigades are based on a variable amount of battalions. Ocenters believe, so don't take this as fact, that the 84th Artillery Brigade in Xinjiang may have three PHL-3, one PHL-16, and two PCL-181 battalions. Artillery brigades retain an 18 howitzer battalion based on 6-2 batteries rather than the 9-2 batteries and maneuver brigades. The 73rd Artillery Brigade in the Eastern Theater Command is also pictured to have received two battalion sets of PCL-181 truck howitzers in 2020. This brigade has at least another battalion each of PHL-3 rocket artillery and PLZ-5 tracked 155mm SPGs and possibly more. According to the U.S. Army's OP-4 manual on Chinese tactics, artillery brigades also have a headquarters, target acquisition battery, meaning stuff like counter-battery radars and sound ranging equipment, a drone battery, and a support company. This should probably be taken as an approximation rather than exact, but artillery brigades definitely have radars and drones. In terms of artillery capabilities, China has been playing catch-up to the US, but it's been doing so fairly quickly. China considers firepower to be a key enabler of maneuver. If they want a 4 to 1 advantage over the enemy in maneuver forces, they want a 5 or 7 to 1 advantage in artillery. To make up for deficiencies in maneuver forces and air power, artillery has received significant investment. Compared to the Russians, for example, a far larger proportion of Chinese units are equipped with platforms built in the 21st century, and Chinese units generally have a higher concentration of artillery than their US counterparts. Although you could argue whether this is offset by US Brigade artillery being more capable overall, and reinforcing fires from US Field Artillery Brigades having more precision munitions than current Chinese equivalents. Notable areas of improvement based on the US Army's assessment include modernized fire control, better sensor-to-shooter infrastructure for creating recon strike complexes, better observation capabilities especially with the proliferation of drones, and introduction of new precision-guided munitions. Most of China's new artillery platforms improve ergonomics and survivability against counter-battery in some way, 
Although in my opinion, the new HIMARS MLRS equivalent is probably the biggest improvement in capability, but I suspect the bottleneck for the PHL-16 won't be getting new trucks into units, but rather getting guided missiles into those tubes. From the outside looking in, a lot of what we can see is the new equipment, but introducing a new kit is probably the easiest part of China's modernization. The US Army states that China's self-propelled howitzers train closely with mechanized forces, and lower echelon commanders integrate a variety of observation assets to make close support actually close. Although it's hard to gauge how a secretive and perpetually peacetime army will do in a peer fight. Sustaining combat operations with a steady stream of artillery ammunition may be their biggest limitation, particularly when you start throwing amphibious or air assault operations into the mix. And when you start talking about precision guided missiles, the cost of those munitions may mean they'd have to be spared for only the most valuable deep targets. Thanks to all our patrons for keeping Battle Order going. Consider joining them at the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, check out our look at missile artillery in the US, Britain, and Japan. We'll see you over there.